4 o'clock in the afternoon on a Wednesday, April 2nd, I have to go to my unit headquarters, so I shut the door to my car after I park it, and I step away from my car, and I hear shots fired. Mm. Now, I've been to Iraq and Afghanistan. I know what shots fired sound like, but I'm on base. I'm behind security. I'm safe, but something wouldn't let me move. So I'm looking to my one o'clock where I heard the shots fired and, and a car comes from the, from the road where, where I'm actually looking at and it comes, pulls up right in front of me, but sir, I'm in a parking lot. Who thinks that they're in danger on base in a parking lot? Not this guy. So I turned my head back again. I took my, away, my eyes off the vehicle and the individual and I turned my head away from him looking back towards my one o'clock and the next shot I heard ripped through my throat. April 2nd of 2014, another soldier that was broken was on a shooting spree. And what I actually heard was him shooting at everybody he saw. Mm. And I was victim number 16. So when I turned my head away, I took a 45 that severed my jugular vein, went through my voice box and traveled into my right shoulder. He drives away and I move away from him, just trying to instinctively just get away. And I go back towards my car and I fall flat on my face and my life is pouring out. And so you're a Texan. How long? I mean, I think it, it, it shouldn't have taken long for all the blood to pour out of my yeah, neck from a 45. Yeah. yeah. So I'm on the ground and I'm freaking out and I'm praying and I'm asking God, God, what happens to my family? I'm not even praying for me. And what I'm asking for is what happens to my family. And in that instance, I hear this audible voice. John, get up or your wife is going to die. And I don't understand what's happening, but I hear it again, but this time more stern. John, get up or your wife is going to die. Here's what was happening. Six months before I was shot, when we left North Carolina to move to Texas, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law both died nine days apart. Wow. Two years before that, my wife lost her brother in a hunting accident where her dad loaded his gun and set it down. It goes off on its own. It kills my brother-in-law. Mm -hmm. He dies in my father-in-law's arms. Mm -hmm. So my wife had lost her mother and her father and her brother, her parents just six months before me. And essentially what Jesus was telling me is, John, if you don't get up off the ground, your wife will take her life. Mm -hmm. Here's the other thing. When I was a young soldier coming back from deployment, the other thing I did is I brought war home. And then I also did what daddy did because my dad died of cirrhosis of the liver. And a lot of times our kids, we, we think that our kids are not going to do what we do. Yeah. Well, what I did is I brought alcohol into my home and I brought brokenness into my home and I brought that war. And during that time, when I was coming back from deployment, my wife is a two time suicide survivor because I was a mean, angry, drunk. And my wife and my children had to toe the line. And my wife felt like she was torn between the children. But I'm telling you right now that I'm here because of a praying grandma on grandma <laughs> prayed us through Amen. those. And when we hit rock bottom, we ended up in the church. So when I'm on the ground, my life is pouring out and God gives me an opportunity. And this is what your listeners need to hear. Jesus didn't shoot me. He didn't shoot me to give me a testimony so that I could go tell the world about him. In the midst of my brokenness, this young gang member, thief, cheat, liar, he's, what he does is he steps into the middle of my brokenness. Mm. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from Daniel chapter three, what he did is he stepped into my fire. And in that moment, he said, John, get up. 